We all know that there are all kinds of aircraft out there that just don't seem feasible in the real world, and we've compiled a list to feature some of the stranger ones. These are some of the most exciting designs we came by on our quest to find the most bizarre aircraft that actually fly. Hey guys, this is your host, American Eye, but today I'm right here on Taltanic, bringing you this video. The Stipa Caproni. This aircraft was designed by Luigi Stipa, an Italian aircraft designer, way back in 1932. And while it doesn't look like it would work, it did. It was built by Caproni, an aircraft manufacturer, also Italian. The fuselage of this plane is what makes it stand out. It was barrel shaped and hollow, and the propeller and engine were enclosed within. The Italian military ended up not all that interested in the development of the plane, nor purchasing it or the design. But it did end up being important as it was a huge step towards future jet propulsion systems. The fuselage's design worked by creating a kind of tapered duct in which the engine's exhaust and the air from the propeller were compressed before exiting the other side. This helped make the engine more efficient and helped pave the way for planes and jets in the here and now. The Vought V173 this plane was built during the Second World War and was aptly called the Flying Pancake, not to be confused with the Vought's XF-5U or Flying Flapjack. Both planes had extremely strange wing designs and it looked as though almost the entirety of them were wings. There were propellers at the end of each wing that was powered by the engines inside the body of the craft, and this design can be attributed to Charles H. Zimmerman. The plane sat at a nose-high 22-degree angle due to having a tiny tail wheel and a tall main undercarriage. The first flight of the V-173 took place on November 23, 1942, and test flights continued through 1943 over the skies of Connecticut. 190 test flights were flown, and understandably, surprised residents reported UFOs almost constantly throughout that time. The Blumenvoss BV-141 what would the world be like if all planes were designed like this? This asymmetrical beauty was meant to be a tactical reconnaissance craft for the Germans during the Second World War. Unfortunately, although the plane did make great in the skies, a few reasons kept it from being produced on a large scale. The preferred engine for the aircraft, the BMW 801, was unavailable at the time, and there was competition in the tactical reconnaissance department by Falk Wolf. By the time the Blumenvoss got its hands on the engines, the FW-189 was already put into production by the German air industry, also known as the RL. Dr. Richard Vaught, a German aircraft designer, was the one responsible for this funky design and featured on a gondola on the starboard side of the fuselage that held the crew. Unfortunately, none of the planes still exist today. North American F-82 this baby was based on the P-51 Mustang and was designed for use in the Second World War as an escort fighter. The design of the craft began in 1943 when the North American aircraft team decided they needed a plane that could fly more than 2,000 miles without having to refuel. This was essential because they needed escorts for B-29 Super Fortress bombers on their missions intended to invade Japan. The only problem was the war ended long before any of the first planes were operational. After the war, they did see use as long-range escort fighters for strategic air commands. They replaced the Northrop P-61 Black Widow, which before the F-82's arrival were being used as all-weather interceptors for the Air Defense Command. The F-82 also got to see action in the Korean War, and there were three North Korean planes taken down by the U.S. that were shot down by these interesting planes. They had two fuselages and impressed Army Air Forces so much that in 1945, they ordered production on them before they even had their first flight. Northrop XB-35 and YB-35 Okay, so these things look like they were a product of a high-power boomerang and a bunch of intense windmills. While they may look cool, they only made it to pre-production and prototype stages. The XB-35 was conceived for the U.S. Air Forces by the Northrop Corporation while the Second World War was still going on and immediately following it. The wings of these planes were thick enough to allow them to carry the entire payload of the plane inside, which enabled designers to get rid of the fuselage and tail sections altogether. But as we said, they didn't make it past the prototype stages, but they did spark enough interest for more development and research into adapting the design into a jet bomber. The jet bomber in question was the YB-49, which also ended up not making it into the production stage. However, it did a Northrop in coming up with something similar, the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, which did get to see action starting in the late 90s, and is still in use today. The Lockheed XFV this strange-looking, strange-sitting aircraft was also called the Salmon and was designed in the early 1950s by Lockheed to try out some vertical takeoffs and landings. In 1948, the U.S. Navy issued a proposal for an aircraft which could take off and land vertically on platforms added by the afterdecks of ships. On December 22, 1953, during taxiing and grounding testing trials, Herman Fish Salmon, the chief test pilot for the Lockheed, took taxiing a little bit too far and passed off the takeoff speed. This resulted in the plane 
and making a little hop, but it wasn't recorded as a first flight. The first official flight occurred on June 16, 1954, and in total, the plane only recorded a total of 32 flights. The XFE project was cancelled in 1955 because the plane was too slow and would be easily bested by contemporary fighters. The Lackner HZ-1 Aerocycle It's too bad this sweet ride didn't make it out of the gate. It was intended to be an American personal helicopter that one person could ride to make their way around the battlefield. It was also designed by De Lackner in the 1950s and was supposed to be operated by inexperienced pilots who could only receive around 20 minutes of training. This proved to be too optimistic as it proved too difficult to fly, and following a couple of HZ-1 crashes, the project and excellent idea were abandoned. Only one model survives and is on display in Newport News, Virginia in the US. Avro Canada VZ-9 Avrocar Hmm, is this what we think it is? This VTOL, which means Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft, was a part of a secret project by the US military and was developed by Avro Canada. The project took place in the very early years of the Cold War and was meant to be given its thrust and lift from just one turbo rotator around the rim of the craft. It was first intended to be able to reach high altitudes and travel at high rates of speed and was initially designed to be like a fighter aircraft. Testing revealed that it had stability and thrust issues in the air. The project ended up abandoned as of September of 1961, or is that just what they want us to think? NASA Hyper 3 you know that if something is dreamt up, designed, and built by NASA, it has to be pretty cool. The Hyper 3 was no exception. If ever there was an aircraft that looked as though it was based on the design of a paper airplane, this was it. It was remotely piloted and was a lifting body aircraft, which would work by lift produced by the body of the vehicles themselves. The sad thing is that NASA spent time developing and building the Hyper 3, but one flight was the extent of its flying career. It was launched from a helicopter at 10,000 feet on December 12, 1969, where it glided just over 3 miles, turned around, went back, and then landed. After that flight totaling 3 minutes, it never got to fly again due to the cancellation of the M2 lifting body program. Sad day. The Bartini Buryev VVA-14 the VVA stands for Vertical Takeoff Amphibious Aircraft, or well, whatever that is in Russian, that's what it stands for, because this was a Soviet aircraft that was developed in the 1970s. It was designed to do just what the name suggests. It could take off from land, on the water, fly at high altitudes and speeds, and fly just over the water's surface using something that's known as aerodynamic ground effect. The craft was designed by Robert Bartini, an Italian-born aircraft designer, and was to be developed in three stages. The plane would gradually get better in every stage. The first prototype was finished in 1972 and took its first flight on September 4th of the same year. A second incarnation with inflatable pontoons began in June 11th, 1975, and the inflatable pontoons were later replaced with rigid ones. Bartini had passed in 1974, and following his death, the project slowed and eventually came to a halt. The aircraft now sits dismantled at the Central Air Force Museum in Moscow. Aerospace Line Super Guppy now this is probably the plane on the list that looks like it has the least chance of making it airborne, but it did. The thing literally looked like a giant air ground guppy cruising through the skies. It was a huge wide body cargo plane that carried basically anything oversized. Did you know the Super Guppy wasn't the first guppy line? The Pregnant Guppy came first and there was also a plane called the Mini Guppy. The first of these Super Guppies or SGs was made from a C97J Turbo Strato Cruiser fuselage. The C-97J was basically just a militarized Boeing 377 Stratocruiser. The fuselage ended up with a length of 141 feet, although inside the cargo compartment measured 94 feet and 6 inches in length. The inside diameter was 25 feet, though the floor measured just 8 feet 9 inches wide. Subsequent Super Guppies added more interior cargo space and could carry weights of 52,500 pounds and can cruise at a higher altitude. They were used to carry mainly airplane parts, but the pregnant guppy had been used to carry parts for NASA's Apollo missions. Airbus Belugas have replaced all iterations of the SG. We've seen a lot of interesting and amazing aircraft so far, but we still got the top spot to go. We'd like to ask you guys, would you want to step aboard of any of these fantastic vehicles? Which one looks the least likely to make it in the air to you? Let us know your thoughts in comments below. Scale Composites Proteus this sucker was designed by Bert Rutan, an American aerospace engineer in the 1990s. Its purpose was to check the potential of using the aircraft as telecommunication relays at high altitudes. It can fly over 18 hours at an elevation nearly 64,000 feet, showing its incredible efficiency. Its first flight occurred on July 26, 1998. 
It can be piloted, flown remotely from the ground, or run semi-autonomously. It set multiple world records for altitude and was even featured on the Time Magazine list of 100 Best of 1998 Design.